Hey guys, happy Thursday. I'm gonna wait just a couple of seconds. We're gonna get a couple people on here and then we are gonna get going. I'm super excited about this. There we go. Make sure I'm actually live where I'm supposed to be live. Yes. Hey, okay, drop me a comment. Let me know where you are watching from when you hop in here. I want to say to the Asana bunny. All right, not right now, kiddo. Hey, guys. So we are going to be talking about setting 90-day goals. If you have, okay, drop me a one in the comments if you've ever set like a New Year's Eve goal or like a New Year's goal or whatever you called it, but basically the beginning of every year, you set like really big goals for yourself. If you've ever set those and don't like, so I think we all have, drop me a one down in the comments. Yes, I think most of us have set those. Now, drop me down a two if you've ever set those and within about a month, maybe two, you have already gone back on your goals or reset them or whatever, like you did not stick with them. Oh yeah, I see a lot of ones, which means a lot of you guys have set goals and a lot of twos, which means a lot of you guys, myself included, we didn't stick to those goals. So that's kind of what I'm going to be talking about right now. Just waiting about one person that I'm supposed to be letting know to get on. And I think she is on here. Okay, perfect. So what I do, I don't set New Year's goals because... It's so easy to set them. I was late hopping on, that's okay. I literally wait a few minutes because regardless if you're late or on time, it doesn't matter because Facebook is delayed. So you don't get told that I even go live until like 30 seconds after I go live. And 30 seconds in Facebook world is a long time because usually I'm already talking by then. So what we're gonna do is grab your journal or Grab a piece of paper and a pen. If you don't do bullet journaling, that's awesome. You don't have to do journaling to actually do this exercise. What I do is every 90 days, I sit down and I set these goals. Now, some of you guys were with me when we did this in December. Drop me a three in the comments if you were with me when we did this in December, because I do wanna know like, who already did this with me one time. So what we did is in December, we laid out all these goals and we're gonna walk you through the same exercise we did now. The awesome thing is though, in, in 90 days, a lot changes. That's why New Year's resolutions, majority of the time they don't work. You don't stick with them all year because so many things change in the course of your year. So first thing we're gonna do, and again, if you were with me in December, that's awesome. Look back and it's cool to see, like I look back at my December goals and some of them I hit, a lot of them I hit, some of them I didn't, some of them I didn't, I don't even care to run toward anymore. Like that's how much things change. Um, and then some of my goals for March are things that I never even thought about in December. So it's just really awesome to see how things change. So first thing I want you to do, top your paper, I just want you to write 90 day goals, March through May. Can you find receipts? Yes. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick a word that you're going to basically live by or claim for the next 90 days. Now for December, for December, January, and February, I'm gonna go back so I make sure I tell you the right word because I do this every 90 days, so sometimes I repeat words. So for those three months, my word was focus. Just kidding, my word was consistent. Um, can't even remember my word. I do not speak Portuguese, sorry guys, this isn't English. Um, so my word was consistent and I was pretty consistent at a lot of things, I, like I am, again, it doesn't matter if you're perfect. It matters that you are working toward your goals. So shout your dang goals out. Gloria, you can't be running, kiddo. You're making my camera shake. So if you're with us in December and your word, whatever your word was, 
drop it in the comments and let us know what's one thing that you did the last 90 days that you are so dang proud of because you stuck with it. Um, so my goal was consistent. Now this, the next 90 days, my goal or my word is anointed. So you're going to pick a word. I'm going to show you pretty excited because I made it look cute. You know, you don't have to, again, you don't have to do any of the extra fillies. I do. I really love bullet journaling. So my word is anointed for the next 90 days. So what I'm claiming is basically claiming that God is going to anoint all of my works, all of my words, all the love that I'm pouring out in the world. He's going to magnify that a hundred times. Like I am praying every single day that all of the work that I do, he basically puts his hand on and he makes the fruit of that work way more than I could ever do by myself. Um, consistency, you could. Consistency is an awesome word and that's something I struggled with. So if that's what you want your word to be, pick consistency. Um, so now I want you to number your paper one through 12. Basically, you are going to write down 12 hats that you wear. Now, if you can't think of 12, don't worry about it. Number it one through 12. You may think of it later. Like this is going to be kind of a crash course and then you'll be finishing it when we get off the video. So I'll tell you the 12 that I wrote down. I wrote down spiritual growth, business, personal development, self-care, marriage, home, mom, friend, teacher, because I homeschool. So teacher to my own kid, lifestyle, leader, and author. So go ahead in the comments, drop me down two or three hats that you personally wear that you can think of right off the top of your head. And then you're going to need to take some creativity to get the rest of those 12. Like this is something, again, you're going to sit down and you're really going to think about and get your thinking cap on. And you're going to like just meditate on yourself basically and figure out what do I want on this paper? Like what are the 12 hats that are the most important to me? And sometimes the hat, again, is like self-care. It's not an actual hat that I'm wearing, but it's me as a person, something that I want to, 12 things I want to focus on, I guess, 12 areas in my life. Like you can label it however you want, but 12 areas, 12 hats, whatever. So drop me down a few in the comments that apply to you. And some of yours might not apply to me. Um, so I have my 12 things down. Beside each thing, I'm going to grade myself. In the last 90 days on a scale of one to 10, how did I rate myself in that area? What definition are you talking about? You read the letter, I see your videos. I love you, explain a little bit. Okay. Um, if you're asking what I do for work, message me and I'll send you some info. I think that's what you're asking. Um, so you're gonna rate yourself. So for example, spiritual growth. I gave myself an eight because I've really been focusing on consistently doing Bible studies and I've been consistently doing them. Um, personal development. I only gave myself a four this time around because we had a lot of life happen. So I didn't get a lot of like, I didn't read a lot of books. I didn't get a lot of self-development in. <laughs> um, I didn't get a lot of self-development in, and so I, I gave myself a four. Like, I did not do as well as I normally would or that I expect myself to do. And, guys, every 90 days, your grades are going to change. Like, my 12 things, only one of them changed, but my grades on all of them are different than December. So, first thing, write down your list of 12. Second thing, grade yourself on a scale of 1 to 10. How well did you perform in that area the last 90 days? Then the third thing you're going to do is right beside that, what are you doing the next 90 days? What are you committing to, to do better in that area? So to show you my list, I've got one through 12. I've got the grade. And then I have something written down beside it that I'm going to focus on. And I'm purposely going to make better the next 90 days. Um, so for example, <clears throat> um, for marriage, I have, I, we did a nine. Now, marriage is kind of a combined goal, obviously, but we graded ourselves as a nine for the last 90 days. We have a very good, very strong marriage, but to make it stronger, we have several friends that just the last 90 days, it has come out that they're having issues with their marriage and had to go to counseling. Now, I have no issue with people going to counseling. I think it's a great idea. If you need it, go. Um, but no one knew that they were having these issues until they announced, and it didn't even announce until it came out that they were going to counseling. 
So I looked at my husband. I was like, we used to read books and do book discussions on our marriage together. Maybe we should get back into doing that just to basically keep up with making sure we're communicating and making sure we're doing all the things to have an awesome marriage to where we don't ever get to the point of needing to go and get help from somebody else. And again, I don't, there's no judgment on that. I think it's a great idea to go get help. I think it's a better idea to consistently help yourself and read the books and listen to the podcasts and have weekly meetings with each other before you ever have issues. So obviously it's one of those like, if you get sick and you don't go to a doctor, kind of dumb, like go to a doctor, but it's a better idea to do all the maintenance so you don't get sick in the first place. Make sense? Like again, not judging anyone, I'm just saying, if you're not having issues in a certain area, don't ignore that area. Go ahead and still work on it so you don't ever have the issues. Okay, so that's the first thing we do, make the list, do all the things with the list, okay? The second part is kind of the journaling part of this. And mine just looks like this. You can make it as plain or as cutesy as you want. It does not matter. Um, you're gonna write down just a few questions and you're gonna answer them. Again, you're gonna answer this yourself. And these are things that, what's happening in my life right now? So first thing you're gonna write down is, what season of life are you in? For us, last, last 90 days when we did this, we were in a running season. We were just running and putting our, we had fires and so, our irons in so many fires and it was an awesome season. This season, we've had a lot of life happen. We are in what I would call a selfish season. The next 90 days, my husband and I have already talked about this. We are being very intentional with who we give our time to, who we give our money to, um, and just very much focused on our family and our goals and what God actually wants us to do going forward versus just jumping in and throwing our time into something else, kind of willy-nilly, committing to a whole bunch of things because we like to serve people. My husband and I, we love serving people. That is an awesome asset. But the flip side of that coin is you can be serving so many people that are taking advantage of you that you should not be serving. So that's something that we're really focusing on this time around is the end of this 90 days, we're going to sit down and decide where do we want to place our time and our money and with whom to make sure that we are getting, we're able to give the most possible, if that makes sense, make the most impact. Um, the second thing you're going to write down is write down a few wins that you had the last 90 days. Every one of you won something. Okay, for example, for me, one of the things, the wins I wrote down is our team is kicking butt. Like kicking butt, guys. We've done so much self-development and leadership training within our little organization that it's just, it's amazing. My marriage, again, I just talked about that. Our marriage is probably the best it has been ever. And we've been married for almost seven years. Um, we got around a better circle of our influence. Like we've just up-leveled a lot of our people that we surround ourselves with. The journaling, like I finally found something that I am so passionate about and it's so easy to share with you guys. Like it's just, that is a win in my book. The next thing you're gonna write down is projects. So these are projects that you are currently working on and that you're gonna focus on for the next 90 days. Um, I have a weight loss goal down here that I'm still working on. It was actually my goal for last the last 90 days and I am four pounds shy of hitting it, so it's still my goal until it's done, and then we're gonna write in a new goal as soon as that one is hit. Um, there's a couple other things down there that are personal. The next thing you're gonna write down is what area do you need more discipline in? Or what areas do you need more discipline in? And guys, this will be saved, this will be posted. You can go back and watch it. You can go back and write this stuff down. If you're like, you're going too fast, I can't write this, that's okay. Like the, if I sat and like had you guys work with me and do all of this stuff, it would probably take over an hour. It took me a little over an hour to do all of this myself. What is my hair doing? Um, and that's not the point of this, this live. The point of this is to give you guys the overview and then you can go take it yourself, write it all down and actually digest it. So you can pause it and write down what you need and then go again and pause it and write down what you need. So areas that you need more discipline in. A big one of ours, money. I 
I'm just going to throw it out there, y'all. I am a spender. They always talk about usually a spender is married to a saver and vice versa. That is absolutely true in our marriage to a point. If you're a spender, drop me down spender, meaning you love to spend money. You love to go shopping. If you're a saver and like you won't go spend $10 on a new pair of shoes, drop me down saver in the comments. So my husband and I found out real quick when we got married, it was opposite. We were so broke. We were living paycheck to paycheck. We didn't have hardly any money, guys. Like I'm talking about a $5 Christmas budget one year because we were that broke. I am amazing at not spending money when it means like if I spend the money, we can't pay our bills. My husband, on the other hand, kind of had the mentality of we don't have the money for rent anyway. So what's it going to hurt for me to buy a $5 burger at McDonald's? Then we started doing the advertising thing. We started coming into a decent amount of money. Roles very quickly reversed. I found out my personality is if I have extra, I'm going to spend it. Like I am very motivated by things. I love nice things. I love clothes. I love makeup. I love shopping. I love spending money on my hair. What a shocker, right? So it was coming in and it's going out as fast as it was coming in for a while. So we just sat down and decided we're going to do a 90 day no spend because my husband is like all the bills are paid. We have money in the bank. Let's see how much like he's motivated by how much can we get our savings up to that don't motivate me. Not even a little bit. Like, I'm just not going to lie to you. That doesn't. I'm like, okay, so money's in the bank. Like, what's it doing for us? Um, so we decided a 90 day no spend. So that is a huge, huge, huge thing that I'm working on the next 90 days. And we set goals for ourselves. So for example, every $500 bonus that I get, I get to keep a hundred of that and go shopping with it. So this month, going shopping with $200. And I'm pretty excited because I feel like I earned all of it, but I'm being being a good steward with like what I'm getting. So I feel like I earned that little leeway to go like waste some money, I guess. I don't know if that makes sense, but for me it does. Um, so that's something that we are very much, I am working on a lot. Um, the next thing is write down right now, what is draining you or stressing you out? And I'm not going to share mine with you because maybe when we do the review next 90 days, I might share that with you. Um, the next thing is write down something that energizes and fills your cup. For me, journaling is a huge one of those. I got, I fell in love with this little book. Um, every day I'm in this, every day I'm journaling about my goals and my dreams. I'm praying, I'm doing my devotions. Like this book is kind of my life at this point. Like if I don't do it, by the end of the day, I'm completely drained. So this just energizes me. Um, Working with my team, again, when you get around like-minded people, that's something that will energize the crap out of you. And that every morning, 6 a.m., we do leadership Zooms. And I get around these women and I get around these men and we're talking and we're like just focused on our goals and it energizes me. Um, watching TV with my husband. Didn't used to, but now I get up at 3 o'clock in the morning currently. So by 8 o'clock, I am ready to go to bed. Usually around 6, 6.30, we lay, well, not lay down. He sits on the couch. I basically lay on him and he absolutely loves it. Like doesn't get annoyed at all. Um, and we watch an hour of whatever he's watching, which usually, and I get so annoyed at this. Usually it's two or three different shows because he does not watch commercials. He's so spoiled. Like he'll be watching something, a commercial comes on. He has to switch to another channel and watch that until that commercial comes on and he switches back and forth. Anyone else do that? If so, drop a comment so I can delete you. We cannot be friends. Totally kidding, but I, I am curious if you do that because I just think it's funny. Or if your husband does that, drop a comment because does it not drive you freaking nuts? Like, can you not say in one channel? How ADD are you that you have to like bounce back and forth? It drives me crazy. Um, the next thing is you're going to write down a few bad habits that you need to break. Guys, one of mine is picking at my cuticles. I know that doesn't seem like anything, in the grand scheme of things, like it's not going to affect my bank account or my marriage or my kids, but oh my gosh, like it's just bad. I just do it and it's awful. Um, something that is frustrating you the most right now, again, not going to delve into that because it's personal, but something that's frustrating you. Um, Eric's the same way. I think a lot of men are like that. Pat, you said you're like that though. And I don't know, maybe some, I guess the women are like that too. I, it drives me dang bat crap crazy. My kid. Okay. Next thing you're going to write down is what is giving you the most joy currently? 
guys, journaling, work, family, and our new church. Those are the four things, and they're just energizing me so much. I'll let you say hi at the end, okay? Um, she won't say hi, but I will lose my train of thought, and we're almost done. The next thing is writing down your greatest fear going into the next 90 days. Guys, I don't know why I struggle with this so hard. My fear is that we will get back to where we were six years ago financially. And I know like it's almost a, it's a stupid thing to worry about, but I grew up having no money whatsoever. I grew up super, super poor. Like if our car broke down, we walked places for a while. Um, if we couldn't pay rent, we just moved. You know, I was, we were just part of that family. Um, whenever, so I remember a little bit of the fear, but not a lot because I was the kid, right? I wasn't the adult. When Brett and I got married, and again, we were just so broke. Um, I remember the fear of if our car breaks down, we're screwed. Like we, we can't get a loan. We don't have cre good credit. We can't buy another car. My husband works an hour away from our house. Like what would we do? Um, if his hours got cut, like how are we going to pay rent? I remember living on ramen noodles and chicken drumsticks for a long time because we didn't have much money for groceries. Um, I just remember feelings of fear. And again, I don't know why I struggle with this because I feel like it's um, kind of a mute point. Like we make good decisions now. We make more money now. Like we have a plan in place. But I also know at the very top of everything, like we could lose everything tomorrow. Because you never know. Like, we're not guaranteed anything in this life. And as much as I trust God, and I honestly don't believe this is going to happen. I Like, he has blessed us beyond measure. Like, I can't even explain. Um, but it is something that I constantly have to go back to God and be like, I know I have this fear. I know it's not biblical because the Bible says that we're supposed to cast our fear and cast our worry upon the Lord. I don't know the words, but I'm pretty sure that's what it means. Um, and that we're not supposed to worry about that stuff. So I know I don't worry, but that is, or I know I shouldn't worry, but that is something that like the devil pops it in my mind every once in a while. And I have to push it out as fast as it comes in. So write down whatever your greatest fear is currently. And then the last thing is write down whatever skill that you want to practice for the next 90 days. Mine, writing devotions. That is something that has been near and dear to my heart for a little while. And I just got to where like I'm actually comfortable going live and like giving you guys a devotional or writing it and posting it if I don't have time to go live. But for a while, I wasn't comfortable sharing that with anybody. And I feel like now I finally am. So I practice makes perfect. I just need to get it better and get it. Um, I don't want to say perfected because I don't think it's ever going to be perfected because I'm so real and raw that like I don't edit myself and I don't edit things when I write them because I feel like if God gave them to me a certain way to give to you, then I probably shouldn't like polish it so much. So anyways, so just a short little overview. And again, this will be posted guys, go back and watch it and actually sit down and write this stuff out. Um, first thing you're going to do is just write down 90 day goals, March through May, write down whatever word you've picked. Then you're going to make your list of 12 things. And these are 12 areas in your life that you're going to focus on. You're going to grade yourself on each of those. And then you're going to write beside each one, one thing that you can focus on the next 90 days to make that area of your life better. Then you're going to answer these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 questions. And then you're done. So you're literally going to sit down with a pen and paper and you're going to answer what season of life am I in currently? What are some of the wins I had the last 90 days? What are some projects I'm going to focus on the next 90 days? What area of my life do I need more discipline? What area of my life is either draining me or stressing me out currently? What are some areas of life, my life that energize and fill my cup? What are some bad habits I need to break? What is frustrating me most the right now? What is giving me the most joy right now? What is my greatest fear currently? So something I'm dealing with. And then what skill am I going to really practice the next 90 days? So... Thank you guys for tuning in. I'm super excited to do these. I'm going to be live every Monday, every Thursday morning, and I'm going to do these devotionals and journals and stuff with you guys. So make sure that you hit, um, hold on, make sure that you are following me. If you're not, click see first. So these actually pop up in your newsfeed. If you think that they create value, share them. Like I appreciate it more than I can tell you, everyone that shares my videos. And then um, if you are not 
on Facebook all the time or Facebook just stresses you out, just go subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'll put it down in the, the comments. Um, it's brand new, but it is something that I will upload all these videos so you can keep them all in one spot instead of like scrolling through a Facebook feed. So have an awesome rest of your Thursday. I think somebody wants to say hi real quick. Hi. And I will talk to you guys later.